Hey, this is Tracy Lewis with Stuff and Things, and it is finally Paper Pumpkin Day. So this was shipped on like the 13th of December, and by the 18th of December, it was in Orlando, and there it sat, unmoving until the 26th. So it came, and I have been now, we've traveled and stayed overnight, at least overnight, before we've counted it in 25 different states across the continental US. Only one time in the last five years have I been told that I have to fill out paperwork in order to receive general delivery mail from whatever the local post office is. So I went in today to get my lost package and he comes out with this pink slip and informs me that I have to fill this form out. And I said, nope, this is the only thing we're getting uh, we're only here a couple more days, so we're gone. And I said, by the way, in the five years of traveling in an RV full-time, you are only the second post office to tell me I need to fill out a form. And I also let him know that I always call ahead of time to confirm that general delivery is accepted because I don't trust uh, their website to be accurate. And I also ask if there's any additional things I need to do. and. The people who answered the phone there at this particular post office did not tell me to come in and fill in a form that he might want to let his people know. And he says, yep, they didn't know that there is a form that has to be filled out. So that's my story. I'm heading home now. I will probably be doing Paper Pumpkin in a day. Today there are some other things I need to take care of and I will get this posted. It's going to be, of course, late since it's already the 27th. I hope everybody had a great holiday. And thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more Paper Pumpkin fun. Hey, I am now back. We have, for this month, loads of pun. I have still made myself ignore and not look at anything online. So this is still a fresh new set for me. And the only thing I knew is the... Uh, advertising gift that I put on my website so I knew it had to do with puns all right so we've got lots of puns that I am gonna have a hard time reading so I'm gonna go away really quick and put this on a dark background all right I am back and we have lots of punny phrases you are cherry sweet so we have cherries banana birthday hat egg toast uh, a little cloud heart some faces a mustache glasses and a high and I'm sorry that's the pits I pick you thanks a bunch feel better soon celebrate go bananas let's grow mold together a toast to your success you tell the best yolks have an egg excellent day excited for you and I loaf you all right, so those are our stamps. The color for the month for the spot is Early Espresso. And let's see what we have inside the box. Oops. Okay. Do you see envelopes? We'll see if we have a pattern on the inside of them to play with. So we've got some tiny dots, some hearts, twine, and uh, dimensionals. A couple of die cut sheets. We have this pattern and the center is a starburst. Some strips of pattern die cut strips. Double sided adhesive dots. Some various sized little, not thought clouds, but whatever those things are. 
cartoon clouds for talking. I bet there's a term for that. I might have to look that up. All right, on the inside, we have three of each color and all three have different designs. So, wow, that's gonna be awesome. Perfect, perfect. So those are the envelopes. And then there should be three styles of cards. I saw a count total of nine. Here are some more really cute die cuts. Eggs, toast, cherries, and bananas. And we have three sheets of three each. So that's plenty to work with. Lots of good materials. And then the last bit we have, oh, we have more. Nice. Look at that. That's going to be a very fun, fun set. Oh, sorry about that. Somebody texting. So we've got um, the back sides solid colors and then the little splats on the front in three colors. And the third pattern is just a, a plaid with the pool party. And let's take a quick peek at the last chunk of supplies that I saw. We've got vellum and some variety of cutout shapes. We have, wow, look at that, hello, with some cute little borders very dainty. I would peel these off carefully. So there's the border. And then these are more strips for layering. Lots and lots of layering options in this kit. So I am going to go away now and uh, put together some additional supplies as well as prepare all of these and start making uh, focal layers and backgrounds. So stay tuned. All right, I'm back. I wanted to go through some prep and supplies. I have color swatches. These are the ones from the instructions. Poppy Parade, Granny Apple Green, Daffodil Delight, Pool Party, crumb cake and early espresso and while I was there I went ahead and grabbed these two colors in case you find the pool party a little too washed out and you want to go brighter I think Coastal Cabana and Bermuda Bay also go just fine so I have also pulled and embossed a variety of dry embossing I think that the dry embossing folders, any of them will work. I went with some more fun patterns versus uh, these traditional ones that I always go with. Tasteful textile, painted texture, brick and mortar, time-worn type. These are a little more subtle and not as fun, but they will work. In fact, any of them. Bark and timber will work just as well but I picked these two are a sneak peek stripes and splatters uh, coming out in the mini catalog January 4th thanks and hello I grabbed the hello I did one of the dotty hearts and grabbed checks and dots so these all are fun I went ahead and cut out or cut down the card bases. So I have a variety of embossed card base backs, one of each color. The dotty heart, I just did a center application. These are like a three quarter width embossing folder. So I did them a bunch of different ways. In this case, I combined the dots with the new stripes and I went ahead and did the hello you can't even tell where I did the repeat pattern of it and so the hello is a great one then with the techniques the various techniques you can do with these 
I have um, sponging, you can sponge the edges, and then I have my sanding sponge out to rough up. These all are a white base, which means you can gently rub off the front. So I will do the hearts because that one I already had in mind to make that one with the white showing through. It's really easy to do and very soft because these are little dots. It's easy to bring out the white. And there you have a really fun white dotted heart show, popping through the granny apple green. So the next is I went ahead and did the splatter emboss in the center on this one card front. I cut off the very thin mat that this card front had. This one I left the card front on. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the mat, but I just want to show you some different ways that you can prepare your backgrounds. Then I went ahead and sliced off a very narrow edge of all three envelopes so you can see what the volume of material as you get. So the dots and the stripes are full full length of the whole envelope. So you will be able to get a strip off of the top band, a full back off the middle, and then some sort of big chunk here off the bottom. And of course in this case of the painted one, you have a line through the middle, but you could still choose to cut this full background and I bet if you put materials on top of of this like a sentiment and a couple of the focals you won't even see the stripe and what brought me to the idea of the darker uh, coastal cabana and Bermuda Bay was these stripes um, are a variety of colors a range from light to dark So the next thing I'm going to do, I was, oh, I wanted one more thing I wanted to show you is I noticed that the matting on the bananas and the bread are quite wide. So you could choose to just snip and fussy cut down the white to whatever width works for you, or you could even choose to trim off all of it. And then by trimming them down, you get rid of the, the little hanging chads that come from having them be popped out of their die cut frame that they're on. So this is an easy enough little technique to do. And then I also created I just took a couple of the pieces and I went ahead and took my large scissors and I roughed up the edges and you could then with this one you could choose to sponge if you didn't want it white you could go ahead and add a dark edge to it Your brand new spot will be nice and juicy. I even took, uh, just for fun, so there's a nice, very lightly sponged. You could choose to go more onto the surface if you want. And then I even took this one. This one, there were a bunch of these on a strip a bunch of the strips and this one was bent a little bit so I went ahead and roughed its edges up as well. So those are some fun prep ideas for all of the supplies and in the end of the day I want to show you what the supplies look like before I get to then um, putting them all together. So I went ahead and cut the or popped out all of these die cuts 
and then there's of course also a variety of other lengths and you can of course take your envelopes and chop those up into smaller bits as well. If you use the larger pieces, there should be some smaller edges left over. So for instance, this hello goes great and you can layer it up any way you'd like, which will be the fun part I am curious, for those of you who watch these videos, do you make your cards up all at once? Which is really what I end up doing. I actually cut all of the pieces out for you guys, I mix and match them, and then I go ahead and make a whole batch of them all at once. I don't necessarily use all of the materials, I will just try to use up all of the focals and backgrounds that I showed, and then I keep all of my extras. I've already done videos showing you how I store all of my extras and they are all stored away in case I ever uh, get desperate for certain materials or sometimes, like if I'm doing a very special card for somebody, like the oversized card that I did for Libby in September, I knew that of I had just used earlier in the summer the kit that had the uh, popsicle and watermelon cut out bases. So I knew to go back to pull those out and use those for a special occasion. So um, let me know if you actually use these one at a time and make just one card specifically for somebody or if you do them in a bunch like I do. So that's a one good simple example. I will then go away clean up my mess and I want to come back and do some simple stamping because there's a really good set of stamps that I already went through what all the sentiments were but look at all of these stamps so I want to do some simple stamping and then I will uh, get into all of the alternatives that I have made so stay tuned all right I've prepared some stamping and these are outline stamps. I've gone ahead and put front and back. When you do front and back stamps, it's a little challenging to keep straight, so be sure to have your chamois handy for making sure the minute you stamp, you clean. And if you don't have a chamois, you can use a wet paper towel. Uh, but you need to keep your stamps clean because you'll forget. It'll dry. Then you'll go and you'll mix your... You'll uh, end up with a possible mess. Because I've even put on one side the hat and the hat and the sentiment are on the same side. And the splatter is on the back side. So I'm just going to do some very basic... stamping here to begin with. And then I have just a couple of quick coloring tips. So if you're really a person who lines things up well, So that is just a fun, different, you could put a celebrate up here if you wanted and have a couple and one down here. I will just leave it like this. Just do a little dark. I like to use whatever black 
shadow lines they give as a guide is my guide for where I put my shadows. Little granny apple green. And there you go, perfect card. Notice it goes through to the back, so now I won't be able to use this one, but this one's perfect. You could die cut this in any shape you want. You could hand cut it out square. You could fussy cut around it. So that is really easy peasy. And there you go. Very cute. Very simple. All right. There you go. So another really fun technique that you can do if, let's say you don't have a lot of supplies. You've got some white paper and you've got uh, pens. Doesn't matter what kind of pens. Just any old pens will do. I'm going to go ahead and take that dark Daffodil Delight marker and I am just going to run it along all four sides. Oops. And it doesn't even have to be very straight. And I will show you in a second why that it doesn't really matter. I've only shown this one other paper pumpkin, but this is a great tip. If you have any friends who you're trying to get into crafting and they're like, oh my goodness, I couldn't do this. There, there's just too many supplies. I don't have room for supplies, which is of course the problem I have being full time in a trailer. You can use your markers. You've now created a mat. I don't have anything trimmed down, but I do have this piece, which is already trimmed down. And voila, I just wanted to show that you can have an instant mat by simply taking white and coloring with any old marker that you have that's close enough to your colors, and you can just see how cute that would be. All right, so I have created four different simple stamping projects. I did a tiny bit of coloring on them. I did a full full background one, which is one of my favorites. Your sentiments can go anywhere you'd like them to be. And with that, I am done with the simple stamping and I will go away to continue creating alternatives. And when I come back, it'll be the final mix and match. And then of course I'll have my showcase at the end. Alright, so I've done a bunch of photography. I can tell that this is one of the kind of kits that it's really hard to do, to like redo an exact design because there's so many possibilities. So what I've done is a little bit different. I've actually stacked up like five different bases, one, two, three, four, five, that we can do some mix and matching. And then I, as I said, I've already finished a bunch of photography there's, um, I haven't counted, but there's something north of 20 different screenshots to choose from and to glean some inspiration from. So I believe this kit, you've got nine envelopes. You can fully use the inside and outside of the envelopes. You have nine bases. You can use the front and back. I have already cut them into halves. You can even cut them into diagonals the solid back. 
I've showed you the dry embossing with the sandpaper, just the typical techniques that I find really extend these kits. I have only done, I did one die cut, it was a circle, just because I wanted to see to show what some different uh, focal techniques, so I took my basic stamped imp projects that I did with you and I fussy cut one and then I cut one out with a circle and I even am going to, I haven't done it yet, but when I'm all done with these five bases, I am going to show you some options where you maybe don't have to cut up the envelope. I, I tried really hard not to cut everything up perfectly. I am a stickler for dimensions, so I will say that, that this particular one, which is the last one I worked on, I had left this envelope kind of its natural size, which meant that it was longer then it was wide, but I just had to trim it down. I tried not to. Uh, it just didn't look right, but I do feel that people who get these kits can just as well do minimal cuts and have their layers not be absolutely perfect dimension-wise um, like I typically do. So without further ado, let's get to some mix and matching. So this is a basic hello. I tried to do some fancier ones and some more basic ones. I took the very small red border and set the hello above it. Just used the vellum to add some dimension. I don't even have anything popped up. I don't think I would pop anything up on this one though. I could, the stripes in the background could be popped up if you wanted to. And then I didn't even add uh, trim because my my bow is off on one of the other layers somewhere and you could do some twirly twine behind the hello if you wanted and you could add any of these little dots and the cute hearts if you really wanted to if you wanted to I thought it would be fun you could do hello and you can add I'm going to steal these from the other design. You could do this. You could easily add the toast, the, the toast to your success. You could add that, including the hello, kind of make it a, I would call it a compound card. Um, so because there's so many pieces, it would be really fun to go ahead and add multiple sayings to it and it would be well received, I am sure. Uh, I used the speckle stamp. I still have it out because I have been speckling things as I go. So don't forget that you can add some more interest to any of your layers by using the speckle. So I am going to take this hello off. Take this guy off and add I'm looking for I might borrow some pieces from this layer so I do have this crumb cake treated it actually has a plaid pattern on it which is an interesting uh, mix with the watercolor and you could move around to wherever you wanted for some interest and then I like the add that and then you can have the toast and you could put a smiley face on the toast if you wanted I have actually been to, to get more layers out of the deal, I just really like adding the vellum circles. And if you really, you know somebody could appreciate it, it's a toast to your success and adding, trying to extend the design to flow down. I think that would be a great design I'm going to actually keep this because I do not have a photograph of that. I knew this is what was going to happen. 
that I would end up with more designs. Okay, so I'm going to take this away, and I have a fun one here underneath. This uses one of the card fronts full size. So many different textures and colors. I love the very thin border. Uh, there's another pattern that we got. It's the stripe. So that stripe actually is another fun one to try. And then put some toast. We've got a couple of eggs. And these are the, that's the small smiley and that's the larger smiley. So this one could have trim. I have to find my, my trim. I don't have it under there. And I like the soft watercolor wash in the background. So this twine is nice and curly. And don't forget that if you don't, if you don't want to do bows, I don't think that you should feel you're limited to bows. This is perfectly set to do some random swirling underneath the plaid. Like so. So I wanted to be sure to show you guys that for more interest. And that one would make a great photograph as well. See, already the two designs I'm showing you are totally different than what I've already photographed. And I knew that would be the case. All right, so let's bring this one back. One of the tricks that I do that you may find helpful if you're trying to do a multi-layer project like this and you're not really sure what elements to pop up, what I usually do is I make these little, these are just a couple of corners of dimensionals and I use those underneath my elements to decide which pieces that I want to pop up. So that is a tip for you when you work on this type of a project. So this actually uses, and I already borrowed the statement. I will give it back. And this is an I pick you. And this is one without the vellum. I took a photograph of this with vellum as well as a layer. And this crumb cake is actually from the opposite side, the outside of one of the envelopes. And I added some hearts. I added a couple of dots. Here's where I found my bow. It unburied itself. So a little bow somewhere, or you could do swirly. Um, curly linen if you wanted. And any one of these little focals could get moved over onto one of the other bases very easily. Okay, so let's set that over here. And I want to build up. I love how this hello embossing folder came out. And then there's the hello. And I envisioned it with There's a large vellum circle and a small vellum circle. So this one could be layered. It's so large, I made it full size, so I didn't leave it with uh, sizing for a mat, which you could definitely do. Oh, here, let's use this. We'll do the small one so that you, because I already showed you what it looks like with the large vellum. And you have this focal that just goes nicely and you could add your trim, and then you could add, with that little bit of crumb cake, you can start adding more layers to make it even more interesting. Come on. 
Oops. Everything is sticking. What I don't usually do very often that I see sometimes that looks really fun is if you purposefully, let's just try it because I don't have any photography this way, purposefully make everything angled from each other. So that's also a really fun treatment and you could even get really crazy and slip underneath yet a third fun layer. You could just keep layering. It's just a matter of how many materials you want to conserve to use for a variety of projects. Do you want to stretch them and make more projects or would you rather have less projects with more layers? So that's that one. And of course, I don't have photography of that either, so I will try to keep that one intact. Here is one of the cutouts that I did. This was my, one of my simple stamping projects, and I just did a simple fussy cut. I am not a good fussy cutter, so you have to just envision what it would look like if you fussy cut it using the inside of the polka dot envelope. Put the small cloud stamp with, I had used the heart stamp, but I went ahead over the heart stamp. The um, epoxy heart is the exact same size, so it covers the stamp perfectly. And I love, love, love pool party with Poppy Parade, and this would be a great Valentine. I'm sure that the Valentine kit that's coming will also be spectacular, but if this is more to your liking, you like things a little more fun, uh, this is a great one to turn into Valentine cards. So that's that idea. I have one last focal that I wanted to play with that I am looking for and it is obviously hiding somewhere underneath things so I will run away and come right back once I unbury where I hid it all right, I found the die cut cherries that I colored. I even added some little dark poppy parade dots in addition, just to make it a little more whimsical looking. And there's one possibility, and I do also like the large vellum. And you could either put it on perfect perfectly lined up oops I had it on straight so something like that this is the yellow with the stripes I did the cert the dots and the stripes and then I cut it in half Now we can start, I wanted to do a little bit, like I told you, with the this funny arced piece from the envelope. And it's possible that it is going to need a solid. And I just want to show you that you can go ahead and not do a lot of cuts. So this is just leaving the arc from the envelope the way it came. And then you can add, I have the brown stripes. And I like all the red. This is really fun. And I see, personally, I see no problem with this, this dotted background with the arc not fitting the size of the full background piece. You could even trim this down and have a 1 8 mat all four sides. 
and let's see what it looks like on the granny apple green and the granny apple green also looks cute again you could cut it down and have a mat and let's take that guy off and here's my other fussy cut guy on that side. I think that this one looks better with the, the layout. I have one last background. I have already done photography of this background with the various uh, focal layers on top. You'll notice that this is uh, that this is a uh, basic white, which is still not as white or gray as the card bases, which is why we use the vellum to help. And then you would have to add some I will also tell you a trick that I did. Um, there's one more piece that I made. It was made out of the envelope inside. The envelope paper is quite thin, and so you can reinforce it. I have it in the photography. Um, I'm gonna go away and find it and come right back to show you that. However, these little corner pieces, you'll notice on the back, it's already two layers. So these are an, have a nice sturdy feel to them. If you wanted to, let's just see what this looks like. Actually, I have not done this yet. So you could use, and this needs a little cleanup along the bottom. So this one, I don't like this edge sticking out. For the moment, I'm just going to hide it like that. Add a third layer. Let's get some brown in there. And you can go ahead and layer those. Now, at this point, if, if I were interested in using this for a card, I would be inclined to add the splatter. I really like adding the splatter to give more more depth and interest, so I would add this bladder right in this corner here, probably extending up. And I wanted to go away and find that one piece to talk about it. I will be right back. I found it, so I am going to bring it out. I have not actually seen what it looks like on this, but I took, this is from the inside flap, I reinforced it by putting it on some basic white. When I trimmed it down, there just happened to be this much left over. So I just left that left over. And it probably goes better here. Let's try this first. Uh, I'm seeing a color difference. I don't know if you can see on the camera, so I'm not too fond of that. But I do like how it looks. as a layer on the granny apple green uh, you could do a very easily do the I'm sorry that's the pits you could offset these if you wanted or have it lined up I am on this particular layout I prefer it like that and then I would add my red and again this one this particular layout have not done the photography for it so I've now already got like 10 more designs than what I've already photographed and I don't know if I will remember them all but you get the idea that this is an 
awfully easy kit to extend with very little materials. And this green is actually not cardstock, it is the back of the Granny Apple Green card. You could, there's nothing wrong with adding a hello. I'm sorry, that's the pits. As I was saying, the compound sentiment with multiple greetings for this style of card is perfect. And then I did want to show you, I'm gonna take this whole thing, and I'm just gonna set it on these hearts. I would probably be trimming down the height so that there wouldn't be the gap top and bottom. But again, I'm trying to stick with just using the natural size of things as you've trimmed them down initially and not worry too much about having them be perfect. And I think that this card looks great too. All right, I think that's all I've got. I now have a whole bunch more photography to do before I get this processed and finished. I have, um, this is before the end of the year. I'm really glad that my paper pumpkin, as you heard, it was lost. And it magically, after December 18th, getting lost on the 26th, it appeared again. So I think somebody stuck it in the back corner and gave it a low priority for whatever reason. So I'm just glad that I have it. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them here on the video or over on my blog. I wish you all a great Happy New Year. Be safe, and thanks for watching.